Hello, this is Trevor Lewis from the Voyager Middle School Steam Lab. I'm here with a video from SolidWorks, and this is a, just a quick video where we're going to only revolve. We're going to use this revolution to make a vase. Usually we loft to make vases, because um, it makes some more interesting vases, but this is a, a way to, ju to just make something real quick and 3D print it w using a revolve. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the right plane here. I want a plane that sticks upwards, so the top plane faces upwards. The front plane faces front, and the right plane faces to the right. So I'm going to actually, I think I want the front plane. So I'm going to choose the front plane, and that's where I'm going to do my work. Um, when I choose the front plane like this in advance, and then go to the sketch tools, what will sometimes happen is when I choose, I'm going to choose a just regular corner rectangle, you can see the front plane turn towards me. If you ever want that to happen, and it doesn't happen automatically, you can always get the thing that you have selected, the flat object you have selected facing forward, by doing control 8 on the keyboard or coming up here to the view cube and choosing normal 2. Um, so now I'm going to draw myself a rectangle. This rectangle is going to be where I'm going to make my vase and it doesn't really matter where I draw it on the front plane. Um, I'm going to, I can pay attention to my units here because I do want to make sure I'm in millimeters and make sure that this is a reasonable size. The way I'm going to do this is the top line of my rectangle and the center line and the bottom line I'm not going to really change. This is the top of my vase, this is the center of my vase, and this is the bottom of my vase. What I want to change is the way the profile looks. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use the spline tool. The spline tool is really great for drawing curves. I'm going to click up here. You can see I have that yellow on edge reference. That way that, that point that I clicked will always be there. And just click at points you want to be on the line. It will make you a nice smooth curve. So I can make a pretty interesting shape just by clicking in random places. Um, and then if I want to stop right there, I can hit escape on the keyboard. It'll stop my spline. And then if I wanted to grab my spline tool again, that, that way I can make a sharp point. So there's a sharp point. And you can see I'm still drawing my spline, so I'm going to hit escape on the keyboard again. So maybe this doesn't look much like a vase to you yet, but we're going to make it into one. We don't need these lines on the outside, though. So to get rid of them, I'm going to choose trim. I like to power trim which just means I click and drag the mouse, click and drag, and I just drag through the lines I don't want. There it goes. Every time I cross a line I don't want, it just disappears. So there's my, my profile. I'm going to revolve it around this central axis of revolution right here. So I could close my sketch, but since I only have one sketch, if I have it open and I go to revolve, it will assume that I want to revolve the sketch I have open. The thing it doesn't know is which way. So it doesn't know, is it this line that you want to revolve, this one, this one. Well, this is the one we said, so I'm going to click on it. It fills that in, automatically revolves it. And that's my vase. It's as simple as that. Uh, you can make some pretty interesting shapes. A revolution is, the way you think about a revolution is that cross-section that we just drew. That's the same cross-section. If you cut this up like a cake, no matter where you cut it, it's going to have that same cross-section. Um, this vase is, is not what I'd want to 3D print just yet because there's no place to put anything inside the vase. So let's hollow it out. This is also pretty easy. You just go to the shell tool and it's, it, it has this big blank area. It says faces to remove. So you just click on the top and it says I'll take that part off. The thickness is set to 10 millimeters. Uh, it's hard to tell what that is, but that's how thick the vase is. 10 is probably too much, but if I hit show preview, it should show me a yellow line on the inside. If it's not going to show me a yellow line on the inside, it might be because of this point that I had here, uh, and it might be having a hard time going in 10 millimeters from that. So let's switch this down to 2 millimeters instead of 10 and see if it'll show me that preview. And if it won't, if you have rebuild errors like this, so what, what's happening is it's it's struggling to do what, it's at, what you're asking it to do. I could probably get this down to a small enough amount that it'll work. Our 3D printer though, if, if I get down to this thin, this is not going to 3D print all that well at 0.5 millimeters. Um, you need to be at least one millimeter thick to 3D print well. Uh, this is probably the problem. So I could always try a different shape and that would probably solve the problem. So try out a couple of vases, turn some in, let me have a look at them and see if I can 3D print them. Um, you want to be at least one millimeter thick on your shell, at least one millimeter thick.